Hello, my name is Eamon McFellamy and today I would like to welcome you all to the luxurious home of Thomas Maguire and his lovely wife Fiona Ennis where I am a special guest today and guess what we are going to be talking about? What they like to talk about most of all, their love of country music. Thomas, it's a Eamon, pleasure. a pleasure to have you today. And How are you Eamon? Very well. Good to all. have you and as well. thanks for inviting me here today. You're very welcome, thank you for coming. Country music, Thomas Maguire, steeped and I remember Thomas Maguire. Several years ago, I, he actually gave up a career in London to follow and fulfil his dream. Has that been working out, Thomas? I certainly had no regrets. Yeah, back, back in 95, I suppose, was my turning point. My father had uh, passed away and, uh, you know, it made me, I suppose, think about life. And uh, at that stage, I was working, uh, doing a nine to five as a quantity surveyor uh, and by night playing the bars, etc. So it made me think what's more important and music was always my my love and uh, so I went into it full time then. And your father had a history of music. He was in the marching band locally here in the lovely town of Herbertstown in County Fermanagh, isn't that correct? So I understand, although I don't know a lot about the actual ins and outs. I never remember my, my father actually playing the trumpet, although there was a trumpet up in the roof space. He never took it down, so yeah. Did you ever find out where it went? Uh, we, we know where it is at the moment, we're just trying to locate it, yeah. Well, another question posed there, Thomas. If you had to do it over again, would you have held on to your 9 to 5, or do you really like what you're doing now? Certainly, I mean, I have no, no regrets in giving up the daytime job while it provided for me while I was uh, working. Uh, now, I'm... They, they used to joke about me at, at work, as soon as the, you could set the clock by me, as soon as it came to quarter to five, Thomas was out of the office. Uh, now, you know, I, I just love the work. I, I'm not rushing uh, home from it or anything. Uh, we do a, a lot of long hours, but as I say, I, I live and breathe it. Yes, and it's not all about the money. It's like George Jones said one time, the love of the music has to come from within. So I would say that's fairly through to you today because you have recorded some very good original songs as well as cover versions of the bigger artists. Yes, certainly. I mean, yeah, some some songs been uh, very good to me down down through the my I'm in my twelfth, uh, thirteenth year at the moment, uh, including uh, songs actually written by your your good self, Eamon. and Dan Rowe from Irvine and Dan Rowe from Irvine Sound, yes, uh, and songs from our, our manager Henry McMahon, of course, as well. They've all been very good to me down through the years. My first album was Margie's at the Lincoln Park Inn, right. followed up by Thomas Maguire sings. And then Fiona came along into the equation, sort of, you know, the, the question was, what do we do here? So what we settled for in the end was basically to, to combine duets plus me singing solo and Fiona singing solo. So there's a bit of, there's a duets, there's Fiona, there's myself on the on the current albums that we record. So there's a bit, a bit in there for everyone, you know. And Fiona, you must think that this works well too on the live stage because you can diversify so much where you can bounce off each other, you can do your solo part as Thomas says, he can do his, and then join the two together and you've introduced a brass section of the band, the two of you as well. That's with right. you playing the saxophone. Yeah, that's right. I have the saxophone in the band about four years now, Eamon. Um, it is nice, you know, and we're still country, but it is nice, as you said, to have that little something different. Um, we still uh, put the brass into the country numbers, you know, um, as you know, again, a lot of the bands use the brass now and it goes down a treat like so you know well it worked a dream for legends in the past as well because johnny cash was one of the first to incorporate a brass section oh. and look how successful it was for him yes so maybe you could become the next porter wagner dolly parton in ireland yeah, perhaps <laughs> oh i wish <laughs> she didn't blow brass though did she <laughs> <laughs> but you, you mentioned the name there, Bobby Bear, that's synonymous with country music, I believe. was actually were in a venue one night where the great man was playing, introduced by Leona that's Williams, right. and you became friendly that's with That's right, Leona. yes. I um, Basically, with with the American acts, um, when I started out, I had a single out called Loving You, Loving Me. And I got a, a phone call, actually, from Hugh O'Brien at the time. He was managing me only for a short period of time. But, um, yeah, he introduced me and he asked me what I introduced me to Leona Williams sorry and asked me would I come along and sing with her now how could you say no to an offer yes. like that and um, he was telling me it's Mo or sorry not Mo Bandy Merle Haggard's ex-wife I was there that's fine with me no problem and that's how I met her and she asked me would I go out to the country jamboree is that right Thomas is that the name yes, of it yeah. and um, Thomas came along out with me and actually I think in the end we got you up for a song as well mm -hmm. and Leona brought us off to this country club and I still can't remember where it is to this day. 
but the amount of the famous singers out there were unbelievable. We met Bobby Bear. Well, we weren't chatting him, but we seen him. Well, I suppose that brings us to another question, Fiona, as I have already posed it to Thomas. Is there anything that he would have done differently and any regrets? What have you got to say? Would you change anything? In the band scene? Yeah. No, not a thing. I have to say, Eamon, maybe Thomas said it already, but I genuinely love country music and... There wouldn't be a day I'd get into the car and drive to Enniskillen. I have country music on all the time, you know. There's times Thomas likes a little break from it, isn't there, Thomas? So the hairdressing <laughs> is gone for good then? At the hairdressing stage? is gone for good, apart from doing a bit of Thomas's. And I have to say, when I go down home to Wexford, um, a lot of the sisters are lined up looking for hairdos, you know what I mean? So, But going back to, would I change anything? Absolutely not. Um, yes, the travelling would be the hardest part. Um, Thomas would disagree on my behalf of that because I just sit back and sleep but when we get to the venues I do work hard and absolutely love it Eamon and I can honestly say it's the first job I've ever had that doesn't feel like work yes. and, and that's a great thing to say that you do something that's a hobby and you know you get paid for it and you enjoy it and you meet so many people and that's what it's all about Well as we said at the start of our conversation here living in the, the picturesque town of Irvinstown in County Fermanagh, about five or six miles from lovely Loch Erin. Have the two of you ever thought of sitting down and penning a song about lovely Loch Erin? I think we'll leave that to the likes of yourself, Eamon, and all <laughs> the other songwriters out there. There are quite a few successful ones recorded <laughs> and played by many as a DJ. Yeah. And you've diversified into TV work now as well. I see you with Hugh O'Brien and Hot Country and various other shows. Uh, Fans seem to have really taken you on board this time. Well, well, th well. Thankfully, you know the the the, the shows like Hot Country uh, and the, all the other various formats out there as well. You know they're providing a, a great platform yes. for artists like ourselves. Uh, and since we've been shown on on the likes of of Hot Country, we've uh, we we've gained a, a new audience, especially over in the UK. Uh, people coming out of the woodwork who'd. Never heard of us before, so it's, it's, it's a great avenue. It's got to be a big plus because I have got to say we were over at the Keith Ness Country Music Festival back at Easter. And when we walked into the venue, the first poster I seen was Thomas Maguire and Fiona Ennis, really? you know, so they were all over the place. Right. And I did ask, did Thomas and the band play over there? They said, yes, they do come over here frequently. Yes, yeah. yes, thank God. Scotland is very, very good for us. That's a long journey. It's, it's <laughs> a long journey, but, you know, it's a, it's a worthwhile journey. <laughs> Well, what does the future hold in store for Thomas and Fiona? Well, I mean, uh, we're blessed to be out uh, doing something that, that we that we love doing, and uh, we thank the people for for supporting us. Without that, it is not possible. Yeah. So, hopefully, we'll just keep keep on on the road, uh, recording, and uh, doing our TV uh, DVD work. You know, just to be able to do what we do now and and carry that forward. And I suppose today it, it's fair to say everyone knows that there's a recession on. Would you see uh, falling off in crowds on your journey now throughout Ireland and the UK? Certainly it has changed things, you know, in every walk of life, in, in every business. But we'll, we'll come out the other side uh, stronger, I hope. Well, that's a good way to look at it because, Fiona, I do know that when people do get a little bit depressed and there's money worries and work worries and everything that now it is they still like to be entertained yeah i think so you know as we say with the recession unfortunately maybe people that would have been able to go two and three nights a week to you know to look around and see what bands are out there and they're able to see three different bands over the weekend i think now you know maybe they're only able to maybe afford one or whatever so you know the crowds have slightly fallen back but as thomas said um, it can't can it get much worse you know please god we have something to look forward to and if we can all just hang in there keep doing what we're doing and it'll come back right you know shortly hopefully and of course the other plus i suppose for yourselves as well you are always available for bookings for weddings and corporate functions as well which not all bands cover well certainly you know we uh, we diversify in any way we we need to uh, we don't we don't specialize in weddings or anything but when we're asked we certainly we, we, we do them, we'll, any, if there's a stage and there's an audience, it doesn't care what the function is. And of course you had kept your other career quiet, you had a, a career one time on radio. Oh, right. oh. <laughs> <laughs> we'd forgotten about that yes, one Eamon. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I used to listen to Thomas Maguire on the radio here in the community station. Really? In, in Irvinstown here in County Fermanagh. 
Well, I have to say, Eamon, those, those were enjoyable days and I had a good mentor uh, at that stage. Uh, yeah, it was a very, a very enjoyable uh, line of work. Would you take it on full time? Uh, never rule anything out. If the opportunity <laughs> ever came up, yeah, I, 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 I certainly, uh, I'd try anything. Yeah. Well, we've covered quite a bit of territory in a short space of time. One thing I didn't ask you, who was your heroes when you were coming up uh, through school days and that listening to the radio and country? I think you had a, a LinkedIn for rock and roll at one stage as well. Oh, s certainly. I mean, I, I suppose, I mean, just talking in, in the wide genres of music, uh, Elvis probably is my uh, number one. Mm -hmm. uh, if we go in, back into the country music, uh, as far as the American stars would go, I'd be my number one is Willie Nelson, and then that spans out to the likes of Johnny Cash, Chris Christopherson, and 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 the likes of that. Uh, back home in Ireland, uh, I mean, the it's it's uh, it's hard to to pick your your favorite, but my favorites would be the likes of you know the Big Toms, the Brian Calls. I learned to to drum to to a tape of Brian Call. Uh, you know, uh, half a heart and you know, arms full of empty. All yes. those songs, all the classics, uh, still have the tape somewhere. Uh, and you know, then to the more moderns, the 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 Declan Nurnies of this world. I I have a great admiration for Declan as a performer and a wonderful guitar player. You know. Well, that's Thomas's uh, legends and stars up to date from who influenced him. Fiona, I think it's only fair. You mentioned Philomena Begley and Susan McCann. Who else would come to mind when you sit down and start thinking about country songs? Yeah, there's a lot of them. Thomas has covered um, quite a lot that I enjoy as well. Um, I have to say, I love Elvis. And you were saying to Thomas about rock and roll. I love rock and roll because I love jiving, I love dancing. Yes. And I love that type of, you know, upbeat uh, music. But um, in regards to the American singers, I love Dolly Parton. And she, who doesn't? You know, she's brilliant. And um, as I say, I would like Willie Nelson now as well. But... Back home, I have to say my number one singer like would be Declan Ernie. Always has been. Um, and the odd time I get a night off, I would still go to Declan shows. And my family would go. And the odd time Thomas was able to make it as well. And um, yeah, Margot and, and Philomena. And uh, sure, the, the list is endless really, isn't it? it? With the amount of... With the emergence then of Lisa McHugh and young artist Derek Ryan. That's Ryan right. And, and all doing those brilliant well. for themselves. Absolutely brilliant. Mm. And that's the way everyone should mm. wish everyone well, I think. And that's the way you need the music scene. Everyone pulling together. Yes, because with the likes of Derek Ryan and Nathan Carter and Lisa McHugh, again, like you said earlier on, a younger audience, a wider audience, a yeah. bigger fan base. It's all needed. Everybody needs everybody in that's this right. music world of ours, I think. Certainly, I mean, yeah, and it just keeps the, the, the wheels in motion with the business, you know, and keeps it uh, refreshed, etc. And pays the bills. Absolutely. Along the way, hopefully. <laughs> I know we have spoke a little bit in detail about Airmanstown, and rightly so, because it's your home base, it's where you were born and reared. But Airmanstown had its fair share of good singers. We had the Jim McGee's of this world who fronted the Claxton Show Band for many, many years. And another artist as well was Derek Balfour, who actually played with Brady Gallagher for a number of years and uh, Derek would have played the local pub scene around about here. Would he have influenced you in the guitar end of it, do you think? Well, Eamon, uh, you're mentioning a man, Derek Balfour, who I suppose I owe my sort of uh, my music career to, to Derek, God rest him. Uh, he, he was my very first experience of music. Um, at the time, my brother, Nigel, used to play with Derek in a just... He Nigel played the drums. Derek was on guitar and vocals. They played in Follis's pub. If you down the main remember street. down the main street, and uh, on every Saturday night, if me and a friend Michael Maguire, we used to to go down on the Saturday night, and just stand outside the window and listen to this music. We were just you know it was it was just, I don't know it was we really enjoyed it and we we're just enthralled with the whole thing, and. Uh, you couldn't see in unless you jumped up on this window ledge and pulled yourself up and had a look in and then your arms would go and you'd drop back down again. But one Saturday, uh, Michael was away and I went down on my own and uh, standing outside and all I could hear was Derek on the guitar and vocals, no drums. So up Thomas jumps up, ledge, looks over the window and uh, no Nigel. There's a drum kit up there, but no Nigel. So I thought, here we go, here's my chance. 
So I went down to, and Michael Fallis was was uh, running the pub at the time. I says, Michael, I see uh, Nigel's not here tonight. And he says, yeah, he didn't turn in. So uh, I I says, I can I can stand in the night if, if Derek had let me. So he went down and asked Derek and says, yeah, no bother. So I there's no sticks. There's a drum kit set up, but no sticks. So I, I think they ran the fastest they ever ran in my life up to Fortal Park, 32 <laughs> Fortal Park, to grab a pair of drumsticks. And up I went, got the drum set, came down and uh, done the gig with Derek. And uh, from that night on, I took Nigel's job. Nigel lost a job from that night on. So that was my very first introduction to music. And uh, so I have a lot to thank Derek Balfour for. And were you getting better paid than Nigel, do you think? <laughs> <laughs> you weren't even meant to be there, Thomas, were you? You were too young. Of course, when you talk about I know, Derek yeah. Balfour and Jim McGee, there's another man from Ermittown as well, who spent a long time with the... Uh, Brian Collin, Buck Roos, Jerry Quinn the drummed as oh, well and played right. the saxophone the same that's as your right. oh, yeah. yes. Jerry's a, yeah, yeah, he's got a great pedigree in music and uh, yeah, he's Absolutely still right. still working away. Jerry Maybe. helped me out quite recently. We were, where were we, Thomas? We were away on holidays in Spain or something on one of the hoolies or whatever and I forgot the, the top end, the top the part of my yeah, saxophone, my crook. And so Thomas said, there's the man, go down to Jerry Quinn. Down I went and he lent me his and... Perfect. And he gave it to me for the whole weekend, and it was great. And Jerry, uh, now that the memory's working, Jerry uh, taught me some of my first chords on, on guitar, to be quite honest, up in Hudson oh, Heights. Right. Uh, yeah, I remember those days as well. So, yeah, thank you, Jerry. He's not only learning from one of the best in the business. Exactly, yeah. yeah great harmony singer, great vocals, and good drummer as well. Any plans about going back to uh, Nashville or America again in the Oh, I'd future? love to. I'm always... I'm always on to Thomas now. We've been twice, as you know, we went on our honeymoon there as well three years ago. Um, yeah, I I definitely want to go back. We're kind of a little bit tired of the of the beach holidays. I prefer something like that yes. where you're going to see your idols. Yes. You know. Well, have you ever thought of maybe perhaps recording one of your albums in Nashville when you would be over, given technology nowadays? Well, Eamon, actually, on our on our honeymoon, uh, back three three years ago, uh, while we were there. I thought, God, this is a great opportunity to, to, to lay down a few tracks. So uh, we had it arranged for us that when we went over there, uh, that we went into a studio and, and done done four songs and put them down. And that really was an ex an experience. Yeah. You had the likes of Pig Robbins there. Harold Pig Brilliant. Robin, Pig yeah, Robin, on, yeah, on piano. Uh, and just to see the way they do it over there, all the musicians in, in the studio and that sounds is just colossal and a, oh, a great experience yeah. and hopefully maybe further down the line we'll do a full album yes. there maybe someday yeah not bad well thomas and fiona i suppose society time now i have to move on and anyway, places <laughs> to go and people to see and whatever i have got to thank you very much for inviting me to your lovely home here today and ladies and gentlemen it has been an absolute pleasure and don't forget Along the way, Thomas and Fiona will be playing in your area. Do go along and say hello and tell them that you were talking to them and put in your request and whatever else you would like to know. A very respectable and lovely couple indeed. We wish them all the best. This is Eamon McPhillamy from Midwest Radio saying, Thomas, thank you for thank you, your time. My pleasure. And Fiona, thank Eamon, you very it's much. it's a pleasure. Indeed. Thank you so much. <laughs>